Hi everyone, I'm Carlos Coronado, I'm a game developer, and today with me I have uh, Alexander Pascal. Hey, I don't think you need it. I don't think I, you need that. I mean, it. not really. No, I'm just some guy. Who cares? Ex-community manager of Epic Games, now teacher at the University of Barcelona, living here in Barcelona, Catalonia. Um, yeah, we're just going to talk about some depth, depth things. And in uh, today's yeah. video... Switch. Yeah, Nintendo Switch. If you're developing using UE4, uh, mm -hmm. Unreal Engine 4, to be clear, uh, and you're making a Switch game or any console game, um, Switch in this one in particular, we'll do other consoles for other videos, but um, we have a few tips for you as far as what to do, what not to do, and the, the troubles you generally encounter when developing for a console. Yeah, so ob obviously the first one is optimization. Like, uh, that, yeah. that's a big one. Like. And in my experience, after releasing Infernium on Nintendo Switch, having been working on Mind Battle Dalamus on Nintendo Switch and also the PS4, let me tell you something. If you aim a game for PS4 at 60 frame and 1080p, then you're good to go on Switch uh, 720p and 30 FPS. It's just like that. It's kind of automatic. Of course, you need to do a little adjustments here yes. and there, but nothing dramatic that is going to take you. Uh, a lot of time it's mostly like focusing on the spikes on on some areas how do you then the question is how do you make a game work 60 frames on a ps4 well you use, just optimize yeah use it's, use the tools that are available it's probably a good idea to use a couple of the developer streams where we talk about optimization yeah. we have a great one it's like a gpu best pra no it's rendering best practices mm -hmm. with zach Parrish and zach does a great tutorial on there, there's GPU actually profiler. lots of good tutorials about yeah. optimization there's, there's a million of them uh, but 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 yeah uh, it, optimizing it, is number one when it comes to consoles it, hardware it, restrictions I, I, I would i would say that if you're a game develop the developer optimizing is the number one your number one you know skill that you have to have yeah because that's gonna broaden even audience. if you're an artist a programmer you you, you need to know how optimization works mm -hmm. especially if you want to release on consoles and especially if you want to release on switch yeah because the, the switch remember if you know anything about the switch's guts they're mostly like a nintendo uh, not uh, an nvidia shield mm -hmm. tablet yeah so essentially they're a souped up nvidia shield tablet with some hand controllers on the side and it can be slotted in for extra power into this base station but uh, otherwise yeah guts it's it's decent guts but you know there are limitations to it Watch out with the draw goals, watch out with the particles, with transparency. On consoles, tra transparency are overkill. Yeah, yeah. And Lean into alpha channels more than doing transparency. Yeah, if if you're it. aiming for 720p, 30fps on Switch, mm -hmm. you should be good to go. Okay, so... Um, next point. The, the Get next the dev point. kit. Getting a dev kit is a little bit tricky because, uh, one, it costs money and you don't want to spend money. Two, uh, getting a hold of one in general is just difficult because you have to know the right people. Uh, so really it comes down to the third point, which is you're going to have to lie, cheat, and steal or have the right kind of connections or a publisher. Um, so the correct answer is kind of <sighs> borrowing from other developers if you know that they have the, the correct The correct answer, I guess, like the, the problem getting a Switch dev kit is not actually pay for the dev kit. It's actually access. getting the access to pay for the dev kit. Yeah, really. Like. And only Nintendo can grant you that. So you can do it through a publisher, if you know a publisher who has a dev kit and you have an interest in... Yeah, they've already got a connection, yeah. they have hardware and, and, it, and if, if you have an interest in video game, they, they will let you use their dev kit. Yeah. On be, the other hand... Being wholly independent... Le, de, let's, let's be real, Alex. Yeah, like, yeah. If you have a cool project, it's on the interest of Nintendo and the publisher or even yourself to release it on Nintendo Switch. So I guess that... The main idea is if you do something cool, you won't have problems getting the dev kit and the access to the Nintendo Switch devnet and blah, blah, blah. But it has to be something cool. And, you know, most, most yeah. of the problem I find with people is uh, it's uh, like, hey, the, the, the Switch, yeah, yeah, I have a, a project and idea. No, no, don't go with a project and idea to show to Nintendo. And how do you contact Nintendo? GDC or email or maybe through a pool? I don't know. But the thing is, you have to be something, yeah. a prototype, something working. Yeah. Don't 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 go there with only an idea. And if you have experience, like uh, another release video games on PS4, fantastic. On on Steam, not that good, but still comes. Like they they use one uh, Nintendo obviously use one cool developers and cool projects. And yeah, getting the dev kit is a problem. I got into problems for getting it, but it's not 
that Nintendo hates me. Like everyone has problems getting the dev yeah. kit. There's, a, there's a finite amount of the resource and it's connections. It really, it's networking and connections that you don't always have that luck and opportunity and, and maybe you email them and they're like, I don't know who you are, who cares? Exactly. And I think this is something good in the sense that it's, What's it's the a, problem with Steam? It's overwhelming. Yeah, this is a, this like, is a gatekeeping method. Exactly. So don't don't be offended if you can't get in immediately. This is why we have to say it's more like look to help, get help. It's going to come down to going out to places. Keep, keep doing something cool. Keep trying, yeah. and you will eventually get the dev yeah, kit. Just you're gonna have to poke people in different places. Look at locals. Go to game dev drink ups. Go to game dev meetups. Make, make, uh, also make, make, make some friends because you're eventually going to have to Be add. online. Make sure that when Nintendo searches your name or your game or whatever, it, yeah. it actually shows uh, some press or some something that... that what, because imagine that you're Nintendo and someone <laughs> asks you for a dev kit. What's the first thing you do? Of course, you look at the trailer and if you like it, what do you do? You search for feedback, for comments of uh, how how much uh, people are actually waiting for the game. Yeah. No, it's just be present. It's. I think I think the best way I can put it to you guys is like this, about being present. Um, you know how Minecraft is on the Nintendo Switch? Uh, you know mm -hmm. how Infiniminer isn't? You ever heard of Infiniminer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Infiniminer is the game that basically is Minecraft, but they ripped it off. and. But guess who had better exposure and marketing and... And all that, like who had a, or the, who but did the, better about it's, showing I mean, it's, it off it's, and getting out there. It's at different time. levels because I don't yeah. think Minecraft is indie anymore. But for the indie, oh, no, no, it no, works no. the same. It oh well, back when it was indie, my oh friend. yeah, 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 back, back in the day, like paid, ten years, man. Back when I paid ten bucks for like the alpha. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, you're going to have to. Um, af uh, after that, I I, I right? don't know how much I can say about this because of NDA. NDA. But believe me, like once you get the dev, once you get the dev kit. It's really fucking easy working with it. Like, like it's not it, hard making the bills and test it. And the it's it's fairly easy, at least easier than in other platforms. And that gets us to the next uh, to the next point, which are rendering commands. So, yeah. in terms of optimization, aside from what I, we mentioned before, that if you aim for a PS4 at 1080 and 60 frames, you need some extra ones for switch because yeah. so switch doesn't like certain things and it doesn't like uh, yeah but it, it makes sense because if you're aiming yeah. to 720 why do you need bloom at quality 5 because there's literally the screen is so little that you're actually lo losing like, why a, do you a need lot of bloom? frame there's a, there's a better question like why do you why do you oh, really, shut the fuck why up. Do you really all my video bloom? games abuse bloom and god rays like a good and real engine yeah, developer god, god, god rays <laughs> yeah sure sure but bloom is so fictional it's okay whoa, so we got out of focus oh, there we go right now you you'll see some things in the screen but uh the point here is uh, there's some commands that execute commands there's a blueprint note that you can execute them there if you feel so that are like air dot and then you bunch of rendering commands. You can yeah. control the quality of the shadows, the quality of effects. I'm going to leave a link in the description yeah. uh, with uh, the Epic Games wiki page with all the rendering yeah, commands. The official docs, but you yeah. just tweak them and play with them. Like for example in Infernium, I don't really need a god rays because I don't abuse them that much so disabled on switch. But mine for example, it's a trade-off. I have god rays but I have a worse quality of bloom mm. because Infernium uses more bloom for the shiny balls. So just Play with them, toy with them, and and that's it. And yeah, it's just tweak things until eventually they will work. That's not that that oh, um, that difficult. As long as we're uh, talking about rendering commands, really quick. Don't forget to set up your inputs in your project file. You're under inputs, of course. so that you can map all your inputs to your different controller like types. This is, this is kind of obvious. I, if you're developing for is, console, hang on, hang on. But, but this wasn't. This was obvious, and these are a couple points. These are obvious, but when somebody was uh, getting officialized, the other point I'd like to make also is: don't forget your user interface it needs to update the buttons uh, from X squared triangle circle or WASD. <laughs> to uh, the A, B, X, Y of a Nintendo we, Switch. We, we, what, what we cannot tell you why we are laughing about that. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to mention specifically why I perhaps know people who have not done this. Let's just say that when you pass certification, they don't like to see PS4 buttons. The, they're, the... they're rival companies. They <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so make sure your user and interface and your inputs are all mapped in properly. User interface, that. subtitles, everything bigger. Why? Because it's 720p, so it needs to be bigger. Oh, that's a great point. Don't, don't, Subtitles should be huge. Well, that's 
for accessibility features oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. subtitles and video games are bad but yeah, oh yeah, this bit. yeah yeah but they make things bigger like uh, everything that you should read it should be bigger than in other consoles and that gets us to the last point which is you develop for Switch, right. mention it to fucking Epic Games. Uh, yeah, uh, if you're doing an Unreal Engine 4 game, guess what? Uh, Unreal Engine 4, when I was community manager of UE4, and I know this is still the case, whenever a Switch game uh, that was made with Unreal came past our desks, it was treated quite differently. Uh, PlayStation 4 is a little bit easier to hit because it has good hardware, mm -hmm. play, uh, PC games, we had a million uh, great PC Unreal games, but... Uh, when a Switch game came through, uh, it was kind of a rarity, and they still are. Switch games for UE4 are still more of a rarity, so the marketing team takes them extra seriously, and the community team takes them extra seriously, and uh, they will... Because it's cool releasing on Switch, it, yeah, it's... Yeah, I'm not saying that if you have, like, a meh Switch game, they're going to care, but if you have a decent or good... Looking Switch game, they will they will but, kind of bump it but, up in but priority. See, I, I think it's really simple. How many games have released really with UE4 on Steam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now millions. like millions. This, uh, this is good on Switch. Maybe once every month. Yeah, it's good PR so for it's them. It's exactly. good PR for you. They'll put you on to the launcher stuff if you if and, you and, ask the right people. Nowadays, if you want to release good. video game and you have, and you want good sales, it's all about the visibility, baby. So one hundred percent about visibility. You, you you need to to fight for that visibility and yeah. releasing on Switch with Epic Games. It's awesome because you get visibility yeah, just yeah. because you're using offer, one Offer interviews to them if they want it. Offer and we almost forgot one point. What? Yeah, and it's an important one. Huh. Once you get access to the Switch SDK, then you can contact Epic Games yes. to not only get access, and you not only get access to the part of the engine that handles the Switch part, but you also get uh, access to the Unreal Engine forums mm -hmm. for Switch. Which yeah. are forums that are in the normal forums, but yeah. which are, they are hidden for other users. Yeah. But you so. will get access to those forums, and this is fantastic because there's so many people, like including myself, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like giving advice or asking questions. And sometimes it's just like now, safe it is system. Also, and also hardcore under NDA. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, remember we can mention that it exists and but that it's we, full of great information, but we won't go into too many details. Exactly. Just, it. What we're saying is when you get the uh, where. When you get access, when you get access, and you're take all a look to the Switch UE4 forums. Yeah, do it because Go it's there. worth it. It's, it's worth it. Not only is it worth it because it's going to solve you problems, but you'll also then have a more direct connection to the Epic Games mm -hmm. Unreal developers, and those programmers will uh, be able to help you more directly. And heck, it doesn't hurt to network while you're yeah, doing so it. Yeah, you know? Mm. Uh, I think we're, uh, we're done. Yeah, like, this that's, is so that's the, really the Switch information. That, once. This is how you release a video game on Switch, as it was super easy. But yeah, no, no, no. There's yeah, actually, it's simplified, but yeah, this tons is Tons of tons of technical things you'll bump into with your specific game. Uh, there's lots of stuff we can't say out loud because of NDA stuff that you will find out once you get on those forums and you talk to Epic. But yeah, that's about all the things that we can say uh, if you're planning on making a Switch game. You optimize, use those rendering commands, talk to Epic. What was the last part? Uh, dev kit. Think about how you're going to be getting a, your hands on a dev kit. Yeah. So those are our main points. Uh, so yeah, so hope you find this video useful and see yeah. you in the next one. Bye. Bye.